Hi to everybody. In this lecture video, we are going to be focusing more on chapter 26. And chapter 26 is about the capacitance and dielectrics. Now, another name for the term dielectrics is nothing else but insulators. Right. After doing this chapter, you will be in a position to define what is the capacitance and you will also be able to derive an expression for the capacitance of a parallel blade capacitor in terms of its physical dimensions. Now, note that there is a difference between a capacitance and a capacitor. And that is what we are going to start with when we dive into, into this chapter. Now, you will also be able to find the resultant equivalent capacitance of a combination of a capacitors connected in both series as well as in parallel. And you will also be able to derive an expression for the energy stored in the capacitor and as a result you can therefore be able to determine the energy density. You will also be able to derive and discuss the influence of an insulator or dielectric material on the capacitance of and the potential across a capacitor. You will also be in the position to give a short description regarding the atomistic model of a dielectric. You are of course also going to be expected to solve the problems on, on the above on the above aspects. Right. Now let us just start by defining what is the what capacitors are. Now capacitors are devices that store electric charges. Now, examples of where capacitors are used include the radio receivers, filters in power supplies to eliminate sparking in automobile ignition system, and energy storing devices in electronic flashes. Now, what is the capacitance? Now, the capacitance, which is denoted by C of a capacitor, is defined is the ratio of the magnitude of the charge on either conductors to the potential difference between the conductors. Now, the mathematical description of the capacitance of a capacitor is, is given as C is just given as Q is equal to Q divided by change in V. Now the SI units of the capacitance is just farads. Now what makes up a capacitor? A capacitor consists of two conductors. These conductors are called plates. When the conductor is charged, the plates carry charges of equal magnitude and opposite directions. Now, a potential difference exists between the plates due to these charges. Now, capacitance will always be a positive quantity. The capacitance of a given capacitor is constant. It doesn't change. Of a certain capacitor, it doesn't change. It doesn't depend to any of, 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 of the change in potential difference or the charge the way we have defined it in the previous slide. I just want to repeat it again, good people. The capacitance of a given capacitor is constant because a capacitor or capacitance is a property of a physical material. Now, the capacitance is a measure of the uh, capacitor ability to store charges. Now, the farads is a very large unit. As a result, you will sometimes see the prefix such as the microfarads or picofarads or nano or millifarads and, and, and so on. Now the parallel plate capacitor, this is a capacitor, this parallel plate capacitor, where this area of this plate is always the same as the area of the other plate. Now each plate is connected to a terminal of the battery. The battery is the source of the potential difference between the plates. Now in the if the capacitor is initially uncharged, the battery establish an electric field in the connecting wires. Right. Now, this field applies a force on 
electrons in the wire just outside of the plates. The force causes the electrons to move onto the negative plate. This continues until equilibrium is established. Now, as soon as the equilibrium has been achieved or established, the plates and the wire and the terminal are all at the same potential. Now, at this point, there is no field present in the wire and the movement of the electrons will definitely stop. The plate is now negatively charged. A similar process occurs on the other plates, on your left plates. Electrons moving away from the plates and leaving it positively charged. In its final configuration, the potential difference across the capacitor, uh, the capacitor plates is the same as the as that of the terminal of the of the battery. And at that moment, the charges are not flowing because the capacitor is actually fully charged. Now let us also do the following quick quiz 26.1. Now a capacitor stores charge Q at the potential difference changing V. What happens if the voltage applied to the capacitor by a battery is is double to two change in V. Now, as I've stated that the capacitor, the capacitance is not, or the capacitor is not going to, to be influenced by, 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 by doubling the change in, in V because the capacitor is just a property of a physical material. As a result, for, for the answer of this quick quiz, the capacitor the capacitance and the charge both doubles, it cannot be true. The capacitance remains the same. Yes, that will be true because the capacitance is not going to be affected. Okay, let me just give more elaboration on that. Say, for example, because we have defined the capacitance as the Q divided by the change, the change in, in V. Right. Now, suppose that you double the the, the the change in potential the moment you double the change in potential the charge that will mean that you are also doubling the charge so that the capacitance doesn't change this is capacitance which doesn't change and i want you to picture it like a, a 20 liter packet of water if the if this packet will contain a 20, 20 liter when it's full. It is not going to be changed. It will always be 20 liter. So I want you to picture this capacitor as, as this. It's not going to be changed. It is actually a property of, of, of this physical uh, material. So the moment you double the change in V, you are eventually doubling the charges. And that is not going to change the, the capacitance of your capacitor right now a capacitance of an isolated sphere now if we assume a spherical sphere a, a sphere charged a conductor with the radius a the sphere will have the same capacitance as it will if they were a conducting sphere of an infinite radius constrained with the original sphere now we normally assume that the, the potential is zero for infinitely large large shells now from the definition we know that the, from the definition that the capacitance is defined as q divided by change in v now but we know what is the change in v for for the spherical symmetry change in v for spherical symmetry is just given by ke q divided by the radius of of that sphere so as a result if you plug that day the q's will cancel and then you left with this equation here now, if you use the, the fact that the Ke from the previous chapters, in fact, chapter 23, Ke is just defined as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Now, if you use that, then you can be able to show that this capacitors will uh, the, the capacitance will just be given by, by this equation. Now, it is very important to to note that this is independent of the charge and potential difference. 
as a result this is also one of the motive why when you double the potential difference from the previous quick quiz the capacitance is not going to change because it doesn't depend on on the on the potential difference or on the on the charges right now let us also do the capacitance for the parallel plates now the charge density on the plates is given as surface charge which is nothing else but is just equal to q divided by area a is the area of each plate the area of each plate is 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 equal the the, the area of of both plates are just equal q is the charge is the charge on each plate equal with opposite side the electric field is uniform between the plates and zero everywhere the capacitance is proportional to the area of its plate and inversely proportional to the distance between the plates for an example for the parallel plate uh, capacitance and as we have done it in uh, in in the previous uh, chapter uh, we know that the, the the potential the potential the potential the change in v for the parallel plates was just given as e ed where we could be even to where we could even be able to determine the electric field in terms of the a gradient of of the of the potential now we know what is the change in v now if you plug the change in v in that equation in that equation of the capacitor then this is what you are going to have this is what you are going to have and of course we we know what is the electric field the electric field is just the electric field for for the for the parallel plate uh, capacitor is just given as q is just given as q divided by epsilon not a now if you plug it here this is what you are going to have and once again note that the capacitor the capacitance of the capacitor doesn't depends on on the change in v or on on q as a result this is the second motivation of why the quick quiz number 26.1 when you double the change in v the capacitance is not changing because the capacitor or the capacitance is uh, the capacitor is just a, the capacitance is just a property of 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 this of this uh, material right let us also do the following quick quiz 25.2 many computers keyboards uh, buttons are constructed are constructed of the capacitors as shown in figure when the keyboard is pushed down the soft insulator between the movable plates and the fixed plate is compressed when the keys is pressed what happens to the capacitor what happens to the capacitance now from the previous equation let me just go back to that equation from the previous equation we can just see that the capacitance is depending on 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 d and on a now in this quick quiz obviously when because the capacitance is just given by this equation here the capacitance is just given by this equation here epsilon naught a divided by by d of the parallel plates now the moment the capacitor is therefore inversely proportional to to d is inversely proportional to d sorry for that is inversely proportional to d and when you increase or when you decrease d by pressing the button therefore it means that the capacitor will will definitely have to will definitely have to to increase as a result the correct answer for this quick quiz is is number a right just for the sake of your your knowledge i find the following uh, example 26.1 very very important now in this example a solid cylindrical conductors of radius a and the charge q is coaxial with a cylindrical shell with a negligible thickness and radius b is greater than a find the capacitance of this electrical capacitor if its length is just given by by l now in order for us to get the capacitance i'm just going to write the equation again and for the last time capacitance is just given by q divided by change in in v 
but we don't know what is the change in v now we will, we are just going to use the equation from the chapter 20 25 to actually define what is the change in v now the change in v is just given by this equation here the change in v from chapter 2025 20, was just given by by this equation here now what is the electric field of this equation of this symmetry now in order for us to get the equations for for the electric field we just have to use the gauss law and the gauss law states that the flask of the electric field is just given by the integral of the closed surface e dot da e dot da is equals to q enclosed divided by epsilon naught charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught now this is the dot product between two vectors and e is a constant then i can just take e outside of the integral and use the advantage of the symmetry because the integral dot da for a cylindrical uh, symmetry is just 2 pi r height but height in this case is just l now it's just equals to the charge enclosed in this case the charge enclosed remember the charge enclosed is just the line charge because it's just going to be lambda is just given by q divided by by l that will mean the Q enclosed is just lambda, lambda L, divided by epsilon naught. Now, from that equation, you can just simplify it. This will cancel the other one. Therefore, you will end up with the electric field. The electric field, the magnitude of electric field is just given by lambda divided by 2 pi R epsilon, epsilon naught. But I am allowed to multiply by 1 in any equation. If I multiply this equation by 1, it doesn't have any, any influence. Therefore, I'm going to take my 1 as 2 divided by 2. 2 divided by 2. If I multiply this by 2 divided by 2, that is just going to be lambda divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r. But what is... What is, and then from the previous chapters, we have seen that this, this is, yes, there must be a factor of two. One over four pi epsilon is nothing else, but it's just K, KE, that constant KE. Therefore, this is just going to be two KE lambda divided by, by R. Now, I know now the equation for the electric field, then I will just go back and then plug that equation on this uh, on this problem. Now I'm just going to plug the equation for the electric field because I know the electric field is 2ke lambda and those are constant and ds in this case is, is just dr and then when you integrate that from a to, to b, this is what you are going to have. Let me just also remind you how to do the integral. When you have to do the integral of one over x, dx in that case this is just the natural log of x plus plus c i just want you to go back to your maths to always remember that when you integrate this one over x this is the natural log of x plus plus c now if you apply the same thing for for the integral of one over r dr then you are just going to have this and if you put the the the, the, the integration limits there but this is just the change in in, in 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 potential the question was asking for the capacitance now capacitance is q divided by the change in potential therefore if you plug the change in v because we know what is the change in v from that equation therefore the q's will just cancel and then you will end up with the capacitance defined by by this equation here right now we are using a circuit sample uh, for, 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 for a capacitor. For example, the capacitor is denoted by this symbol and the battery is always denoted by this symbol as you know from your high school. But then the positive terminal is at the higher terminal. That is why the line, the vertical line for the positive is bigger than the, the line for a negative terminal, right? For the this, this is, is the symbol that we are using for an open switch, switch and when the switch is closed, we are using this this, this symbol. Right. 
Now, let us just start with the capacitor, uh, the capacitors in, uh, connected in, in parallel. When capacitors are first connected in, in the circuits, electrons are transferred from the left plates through the periphery to the right plates, leaving the left plates positively charged and the right plates negatively, negatively charged. Now, in that case, the flow of charges ceases when the voltage across the capacitors equal that of the, of the battery. Now, the potential difference across the capacitor is the same, and each is equal to the voltage of the, of the battery. Now, when the equilibrium, of course, has, has been reached, the change in V1 is just the same as the change in V2, which is nothing else, but it's the same as the change in the uh, potential, uh, uh, the, the, the change in potential of, of, of the battery. Now, the capacitor, the capacitors reach the maximum charge when the flow of charge stops or ceases. Now, the total charge is equal to the sum of the charges on the on both capacitor. Now, what does this, uh, this mean? It means, therefore, that whenever I want to get the total charge for the two capacitors connected in in, in parallel, therefore, I will just have to have Q1 plus 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 q2 but somebody might ask you what is the total capacitance or the c equivalent the c equivalent will therefore be given as the following equation c equivalent or the total capacitance because we know that the 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 charge is given as C change in V. Therefore, the total capacitance in this equation, I'm just going to replace whenever I see Q, I'm just going to write this. But instead of writing the Q total, I'll just write C equivalent. And then I'll just have to multiply it by change in V. That must be equal to Q1 plus Q2. But whenever I see Q1, I'll just write C1 and then write change in V1 plus C2 change in v, V2. But we have seen that the change in V is just equal to the change in, in V1, which is just equal to the change in, in V2. Now from this equation here, from this equation here, that will just be Q equivalent, change in V is just the same as the change in V times C1 plus C2. Why that is the case? Because of this. Right. Now, as you can see, this change in V will just cancel with the other one. Now, you will end up with this uh, equation that the C equivalent for the capacitance connected in, in parallel is nothing else but it's just C1 plus, plus, plus C2. Now, this is the equation for the capacitors connected in 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 parallel when it was resistors of course this was going to be resistors in series i'm just mentioning it because i know that you know for resistors connected in series from high school so that's what i wanted you to see as a result that's why you are you see you see that that equation here on on this on this image here that the equivalent resistance is just given by this. Now the equivalent capacitance must have exactly the same external effect on the circuit as the original capacitor. Now that is, these two connected in parallel can just be presented as one equivalent uh, capacitor, which will just have the same effect as this, these two. Now the equivalent capacitor uh, for the Capacitance connected in series is just given by, by this equation, right? Now, if you have more than two or more than three, this is what you are going to have for your equivalent uh, capacitance. The equivalent capacitance of a parallel combination of a capacitor is greater than any of the individual capacitors. That is essentially saying that the area, the area is just, is just, 
combine the area of a capacitor is just combined. Why that is the case? Because you remember that the equation for the capacitors of, of the blade is just given as the epsilon naught the A divided by, by D. Now it will just mean that if you you are just increasing the area for 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 for, for the capacitor for uh, when the capacitors are, are are in in are connected in 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 parallel, right? Now let us also deal with the capacitors in in in, in series. Now these are the capacitors in series C one and C two. Now when the battery is connected to the circuit, electrons and are transferred from the left plate of C one to the right plate of C two through the battery. Now, at this negative charge accumulates on the right blades of C2, an equivalent amount of negative charge is removed from the left blade of C2, leaving it with an excess positive charges or holes. All of the right blades gains charges of a negative Q, and all the left blades have charges of positive Q. Right. Now, in this case, in this case, an equivalent capacitance can be found uh, that perform the same uh, function as the, the the combination of of the one in series. Now, in this case, the equivalent capacitance is just going to be given by by this equation here. Now, the charges are all the same for the capacitance connected in series. Now, let us just try to derive this equation that you are seeing here for the equivalent uh, capacitance when the capacitors are connected in in series. Now, in this case, we know this, that the charge is, is just the same. The charge is just the same. Right. Now, in this case, you are just going to have a Q. We know that Q1 is equal to Q2. Now, I just want to write this equation here, that the Q is just C change in, in V. But the change in V, the total change in V, the total change in V is nothing else but is just the change in V1 plus the change in in V2. Now from this equation, if I want to write the equivalent uh, capacitance, therefore I would just have the equivalent capacitance as Q total divided by C, C equivalent, which is nothing else but is Q1 divided by by C1 plus Q2 divided by by C C2. Now, when you look here, that Q1 is equal to Q2 is equal to just the Q total. Therefore, this equation here will just be will just be because this Q total is just the same. This is just the same. Q total is just the same as Q1 is is the same as Q2. Therefore. All the Q's will, will just cancel. That will mean that this equation will just be Q divided by C equivalent is equal to Q divided by C1 plus Q divided by, by C2. As a result, you can just see that this will just be 1 over C equivalent is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C C2 because these Q's will just cancel each other. Right. So that is that equation that you are seeing there for the for the for the capacitors connected in 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 series. So this is what you are seeing in there. Right. Now a capacitors in series, the potential difference adds up to the potential difference of, of this. I mean, this is what I've just done. The equivalent capacitance of a series combination is always less than any individual capacitors in, in the combination. So that will just always be less than when the capacitors are connected in, in, in series. Right. Now let us just do the, the following quick quiz. Two capacitors are identically the can be connected in series or in parallel. If you want the smallest equivalent capacitors for the combination, how should you connect them? This must just be very easy because we've just done this from the previous slide. Therefore, that must be connected in series so that you can have the, the lesser, the lesser uh, C equivalent. Right. 
Now let us also do the example 26.3, equivalent capacitance. Find the equivalent capacitance between A and B, between point A and, and B, for a combination of the capacitor shown in the figure. All capacitors are in microfarads. Now in this case, this capacitor and that one are connected in, in parallel. This one and that one are connected in parallel. Therefore, we can just add these values. 1 plus 3 is going to be 4. Here is going to be... 6 plus 2 that is just going to be 8 and all those other capacitors will therefore be connected in in, in series so therefore we start with this one they are in parallel you just add algebraic sum of this and then you are just going to have four these ones are connected in parallel you just add the algebraic sum this is what you are going to have and then from there you can just see that this one and that one are connected in series. Now, when you apply the equation for the series, uh, the capacitor in series, you will just find this is 2. And then these ones are in series, this is going to be 2. But this and that are connected in, in parallel. Therefore, this is what you are going to have as, as your, your equivalent, equivalent capacitors. Now, the equivalent for the first one is just going to give us 4 because it's going to be this one plus that other one. And now the equivalent for this uh, 2 is just going to be 8. Now, from there, the uh, equivalent, 1 over C equivalent is just going to be this. Now, that is just going to be this case there. This is just going to be this case there. Now, if you work out this and then you don't forget to reverse this because this is 1 over C. This is 1 over, this is 1 over C equivalent is just given by, by that equation 1 over 2. It's just given by 1 over, 1 over 2.0 microfarad. Therefore, in this case, you should not forget that this is the not the, this is the inverse of C equivalent. But now, if you want the C equivalent, you will just have to write it. You just have to cross multiply, and then when you cross multiply, you will just find the C equivalent. C equivalent is just given as 2.0 micro microfarad. So that's what I am just saying. Please don't forget to rearrange the equation in order for you to be able to get the total. The, the, the C equivalent. Right. In that case, that is just going to be that. Now, from there, you can also get the C equivalent for uh, for the system, and the C equivalent for the system is just going to be given by by this by this case. Now, in that case, this two is just for this one, and this four is just for for this for this lower lower branch. Now, in that case, the C equivalent, therefore, will just be adding because this one and that one is connected in, in parallel. Therefore, we just add the algebraic sum of, of both, then you end up with 6.0 microfarad because that is going to be this one plus, plus this one. All right. Now, energy in the capacitor. Let us also uh, do the energy energy store in the capacitor. Consider the circuit to be a system. Before the switch is closed, before the switch is closed in the circuit, before the switch is closed, the energy is stored as a chemical energy in the battery. When the switch is closed, the energy is transformed from a chemical to electrical potential energy. The electrical potential energy is related to the separation of the positive and negative charged on on the plate. A capacitor can be described as a device that store energy as, as well as, as the charge. Now, the moment you close the, the, the switch, now assume the capacitor is being charged and at some point has a charge Q on it. Now, the work that needs to be done to transfer a small amount of charge, DQ, is just given by, by this equation. This is the case the, this is the work done this is a, an amount of a very small work which is required to move a very small amount of charge now we know what is the change in v change in v is c over is q divided by by c therefore if you take the integral from zero to w therefore you will end up with work is just given by by this equation here because here you are just going to take the integral from zero to c from zero to c when you are charging the the capacitor therefore that is just going to be given by this equation now the total work required is just nothing else but it's just given by q squared divided by 2c the q squared because of the integration we integrate this 
for example, let me just remind you if you have forgotten. Now suppose that you are being asked to integrate x dx. When you integrate that, that is just going to be x squared plus c. So you just apply the same thing with the with the integral integral q dq and then 1 over c can be taken outside the integral therefore this is what you are going to have after you put the integration limits there right now the work done in charging the capacitor appears as electrical uh, potential energy now the electrical potential energy of course this is the equation that we've just derived now now this is the equation that we have derived now now but we can just use the the relation which is nothing as the relation for 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 q is equal to c change in v now if we use this relation therefore we can be able to come up with this other two equation for example if i i know that u is just given as q squared divided by 2c I just want to write C in terms of that. Therefore, here I'm just going to have C, C squared change in, in V squared divided by 2, two C. Therefore, this will cancel one day. Then I will end up with 1 divided by 2 C change in, in V squared. So which is that equation here? But I can also use uh, uh, one of the uh, this equation to replace a change in v or c. Then you will end up with this equation in in here. What does this equation say, by the way? Let me just uh, explain it uh, by 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 saying: say you only know the the charge and the capacitor. Therefore, you cannot use this equation because you don't know the change in potential. But now if you know the change in potential and the charge, then you use this equation. But if you don't know the charge, but you know the capacitors and the change in V, then you just use this equation because you don't know the charge. So this is the equation for the for the electric energy stored in the in the capacitor. This applies to be a capacitor of any 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 geometry. The energy stored increases as the charge increases and as the potential difference increases. In practice, this is a maximum voltage before this charge acquired between the, the plates. Now, what is the energy energy density? Now, because this is the capacitor of the parallel plates, and we know what is the capacitor of the parallel plate from that equation of the, the, the electric potential energy. Therefore, I'm just going to replace the C with what I know as, as far as the, the parallel plates are concerned, the capacitor, and then the, the change in V for the parallel plates is just given by this. Now, if you rearrange that equation, this is what you are going to have as your change in your, 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 the, the energy stored in, 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 in a capacitor. But what is the energy density? The energy density is u divided by the volume now if you divide this by volume a the area times d will just cancel therefore the energy density which is denoted by small u e is just given by one over two epsilon naught e e squared right what i'm trying to say here is i'm going to take it from the last equation there from the last equation the last equation stating that u e U e is just given by one over two epsilon naught a d epsilon naught a d a d e squared, and then you've got e squared there. Now, when I'm saying the energy density is, you divide u e when you divide it by volume, that is just going to give us small u e which is nothing else because this volume will cancel this A times D, which is nothing else but it's just a volume. Therefore, that will just be equal to 1 over 2 epsilon naught E E squared. That is the energy density of your of your uh, capacitor. So that's that's basically what I, I wanted you, you to see, that the energy density can, the energy per unit volume, Energy density is nothing else but it's the energy per unit volume. This is 
very simply because you just divide by by volume there now let us also do the following quick quiz you have three capacitors and a battery in which of the following combination of the three capacitors is the maximum possible energy stored when the combination is attached to the to the battery we want more 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 of the energy now that must happen when these are connected in parallel why this will happen when these are connected in parallel is because when these are connected in parallel the total charge the total charge increases now if the total charge increases also the the, the energy will will increase therefore when they are in parallel you remember when they are in parallel the total charge the total charge is just given by say you have two capacitor plus q2 as we have done in the previous slide but when they are in series the q total or q is just nothing else but it's just q1 which is just equal to q2 so you need to connect them in parallel because this is a parallel connection and this is the series connection therefore for you to have a total energy you just have to connect them in 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 parallel because you will have more 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 charges right now let us also do the following example 26.4 rewiring to a charged a capacitor now two capacitor c1 and c2 where c c1 is greater than c2 are charged to the same initial potential difference change in vi the initial the charged capacitor are removed from the battery and the uh, blades are connected with opposite polarity as in the in the top you see the polarity is different here because you've got negative and then you've got positive there on your left hand side if i'm considering the left hand side now in the top figure the switch s1 and s2 are then closed in the bottom figure now you have closed the switch find the final potential difference change in v final between point a and b after the switches are have been closed right in order for you to do that you are just going to write the total charge because they are connected in in parallel now the total charge is uh, the initial total charge is just going to be given when the switch is open of course when the switch is open this is what is going to happen now this is the equation for for for, for the left side of this uh, blade you are just going to have this but now because of the polarity there because of the polarity this is what you are going to have you are just going to have minus while on the q1 you're just going to have positive because the 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 the, the charges there are, are are positive therefore this is what you're going to have for the first one now when you rearrange the equation because c uh, the changing uh, vi is just the same this is what you are going to have now let us also do the final charge the final charge as we can see the charges will have rearranged and now you've got positive you also have positive as a result this is just going to be positive there because of the charges have been rearranged the positive and the negatives are being separated when you are closing the switches so as a result this is what you are going to have for your q uh, q final now we know q final q final is just given as uh, is just the same as qi now in that case this is what you are going to have now if you write this equation because you know what is qi qi is given by the the q final is given by this equation here and then the q final is uh, the, the qi is given by that equation the qi is given by that equation here now this is what you are going to have now if you rearrange this equation you can just find that the change in the potential different the final change in a potential is just given by by this equation right please note 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 the signs initially and note the signs finally right now the part b of the question is say find the total energy stored in the capacitor before and after the switches are closed and determine the ratio of the final energy to the initial energy now the initial energy is just given by this because we know that the initial is just going to be given by by this this is just the the initial energy now the final energy is just given by by this by this equation here right now if we 
have to find the uh, because we know what is the change in vf from the previous uh, problem uh, part a then we just take the change in v final we just plug it there now you rearrange the equation this is what you are going to have as your as your u your final now the ratio of u u u final to u initial remember u initial is in the previous slide then therefore this is just what you are going to have and half will just cancel and some of the terms will just cancel after simplification this is what you are going to have as your ratio of your 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 final energy and the initial initial energy right what if the two capacitors have the same uh, capacitance what will you expect to to happen when the switches are closed now if this c1 is equal to c2 therefore qi will just be zero and then change in v final will also be zero as a result the u final will also will just be also zero that would mean the capacitor is not going to be to be charging in short now the capacitor with dielectrics a capacitor with an insulator a dielectric is a non-conducting material that when placed between the plates of a capacitor increases the capacitance dielectric includes wrapper glass and works as paper with a dielectric the capacitance becomes c is equal to k kappa times c c naught this means that the capacitor increased by this factor to the initial value the capacitance increased by a factor of kappa to the initial capacitance. Now the capacitance increases by the factor of K and the electric completely fills the region between the plates. K or kappa is defined as the, the electric constant of, of material. That is different materials have different uh, the electric constant. And then you will shortly see, see, see different uh, Ks or different kappas for different dielectric constant for different materials. Now, for a parallel plate capacitor, we know that the capacitance is just given by, by this equation. Now, therefore, if we have the dielectric, therefore, you will just have to multiply this by that factor of dielectric constant. In theory, D could be made very small to create a very large capacitance. In practice, there is a limit of D. D is uh, limited by the electric discharge that could acquire through the, the electric medium separating the plates. For a given D, the maximum voltage that can be applied to a capacitor without causing a discharge depends on the dielectric strength of, of the material. Now, in this case, I just want to show you that if you have a capacitor, uh, C0, uh, and then you've got Q0 there. Uh, this is the potential difference across the charged capacitor, uh, just change in V0. But in this case, this is the capacitor when the dielectric or an insulator, an um, insulating material is being placed between 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 the, the insulator. In that case, the potential, the potential, of course, the, the, the potential between this, this, this uh, plates uh, because of this dielectric material will just drop by that factor of the dielectric constant now if we know that the potential drops and then we use the fact that c is given by q not divided by change in v therefore we just plug the change in v because we know that the potential will drop for this case when you have the dielectric uh, material uh, between these plates of your capacitor therefore this is what you are going to see that the c is just given by k c c naught therefore the capacitor will increase now i will also show you why the capacitance why the capacitance of the capacitor will will increase right now as a result because we know c naught c naught is nothing else but it's just given by by this equation here therefore the total capacitance will just increase by a factor of of the k right now, dielectrics provide the following advantage. It increases the capacitance, increases the maximum operating voltage, possible mechanical supports. It also gives a support uh, between the plates. This allows the plates to be close uh, together without uh, touching. This decreases D and increases the capacitor C, the capacitance C. Right. Now, this is a table for different different types of material with different uh, dielectric uh, dielectric material as well as dielectric dielectric strength right now the dielectric and atomic and atomic view now suppose that you start with this uh, a 
insulator and when you start with this insulator the molecules that makes up the this dielectric material or an, an insulator are arranged in the, this for an example as, as a model as a dipole and they are just arranged randomly like this now the molecules are randomly oriented in the absence of an electric field and now the moment we we place this molecule inside the region of the electric field. The moment we put that inside the region of the electric field, uh, or maybe we put that uh, dielectric material within the two plates, therefore this will be subjected to the to to the field. And now, as a result, there will be the negatives and the positive will just be separated. Uh, there will be uh, dipoles will just be induced or the electric fields, the, the electric field will cause the separation of negatives as well as positive as, as you are seeing now. Now the molecule will therefore align itself and this alignment of the molecule will always be depending on the field strength. If the field is too strong, the molecules will align more straight and now if the field is very weak the molecule will also be aligning in accordance with the with the field right the degree of alignment of the molecule with the field depends on the temperature and the magnitude of the of the field now in general the alignment increases with the decrease in temperature and the alignment increases with increase in Field, field strength, as I've stated. If the molecules of the dielectrics are nonpolar molecules, the electric field produces some charge separation. Now, these phenomena are induced dipole moment. Now, the effect is then the same as if the molecules were, were polar. For an example, you see now uh, from that molecule, then uh, this is just going to make another a capacitor. That molecule, uh, the dielectric molecule, uh, 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 substance or dielectric or the insulating a material will just add the capacitance because you are just going to have positive for the plates and negative for the plates and for the that molecule you just have another a capacitor there because the charges will just be separated and as a result you will also have the the induced electric field the charge the charge the uh, edges of the dielectric as a second pair of a plate producing an induced electric field in the direction opposite to original electric field because the induced field the induced field because of the fact that the positive for the induced uh, field because of placing this material inside the region of the of the electric field therefore it will just be in an opposite direction to the original electric fields therefore that is why we are saying this is just an induced field therefore as a result the adding your 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 dielectric or insulating material between the the capacitor will always increase the capacitance because you have another capacitor inside inside there, right? Now the electric field due to the plates is direct, uh, directed to the right and it polarizes the the dielectric material uh, by uh, polarization. We mean that it separates the negatives as well as the positive uh, positive charges. Now the net e the net effect of the dielectric di is an induced surface charges that results in an induced electric field. If the dielectric were replaced with a conductor, the net field between the plates would just be zero. You remember, if this was replaced by the conductor, what is the electric field inside the conductor? It just equals to equals to zero. So, good people, I would like to pause here, and these are your tutorial problems and I will see you next time. Goodbye and keep well.